Hey guys, Brendan Owner Productions here, and welcome to how to implement Twitter into your application, part two. Uh, now, I haven't made this video in a while, but hey, whatever, I'm making it now, right? <laughs> um, this is going to be my first tutorial actually running at something higher than 9 frames per second. This is going to be running at a whopping 30 frames per second, so if you notice a, um, that was weird, if you notice some type of quality change, eh, or anything in the video uh, please let me know in the comments thank you so right now we're actually going to be uh, going over how to do more advanced things using Twitter VB in our Twitter client now if you haven't seen this uh, Twitter client then uh, or you don't have something like it you should probably visit part one of my tutorial which is uh, linked right now alright so anyway let's get started so if you're making a Twitter client, the first thing you probably want to do is get a, a person's tweets like from the main page, like uh, as they would see it when they log into Twitter. So an easy way to do this is to add a nice list box here, and this will be called list box one. So when the user enters their code, when they double click on enter, um, we're actually going to make it so it displays their um, their feed as they would receive on twitter.com. So what we need to do first is isolate each individual entry and then add it to the text box. So we're going to say for each entry in TW, which is our Twitter client if you don't remember, dot, and then uh, its home timeline. And that's pretty much it. And then, I don't know if we need to provide any more information here. No, we don't. We're going to say listbox one dot items dot add entry dot two string just to make sure, and uh, there we go. So now we've got a nice. Uh, it'll be added as soon as we press enter, and as you can see here, we also have a lot of information that we can add to this. For example, we can actually add the user that posted it, mm, the text. I think we're actually going to have to do entry dot text dot two string. So now let's go ahead and test this out. So we're going to debug our application and we're going to press open code. Just authorize that with my Twitter account. And then we're going to type in the code 8511388. Enter. And as you can see, um, all the Twitter updates, the recent Twitter updates, are right here in this list box. Now we can do something even more advanced, and um, we can create a list view here, and we can uh, go down here where it says view, and then we can change it to details. Also, a few other items we should probably change, but for tutorial purposes, we're not going to do that. And then columns, we can add two. This one will be um, the text, we'll say user, and this one will be post. So as you remember from our list view tutorial, we are just going to want to add more information to our list view. Now let's see if I remember how to do this. So first thing we're going to want to do is say list view one dot begin update and we're going to say dim let's just name it n as new list view list view item n dot uh, text is uh, oh it would be the username for this one so tw dot or no entry dot user dot uh. alright now we gotta find something about a name oh, screen name that's probably it dot to string and then we're going to say m dot sub items dot add text this will be tw dot uh, or no entry dot text dot to string and then uh, I think that's all we need to do. We need to refresh the list view. And then end the 
update. And I think that's it. Hopefully I'm right. So now after we've done this, what we're pretty much doing here is we're grabbing each post in the um, the homepage timeline and then we're just adding it to this list view. So first of all we're adding the um, the user that posted it, their screen name, and then in the second column we're adding what they actually posted. So let's go ahead and check if this works. Open the code again. Authorize app. 74730051. Enter. Okay, apparently that did not work. You know what I'm going to do? I know it's because my list view code's off, so I'm actually going to go to my own list view video and uh, check it out. Be right back. Okay, I just consulted my own video, and it turns out that instead of this and dot text, we need to say n equals list box or list view one dot items dot add, and then the text, which is their username, so entry dot user dot screen name dot to string. Bam! All right, let's try it now. Just open the code. Authorize app. Five two 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 zero three. Enter. And now, as you see here, we have their username and um, what they've posted. So you can see here the Windows has posted "Join us for tomorrow." Uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff, I suppose. So now we can even go more in depth. As you saw there, there is plenty of ways to go more in depth with this um, plugin. For example, if we go back to Form One. We can actually um, add a new column. Columns. And this one will be called pick. And this will be the actual user's picture. So we can say n.subitems.add and then entry.user. And then profile image URL is what we want. Wait, we don't. Actually, I don't know how to use images in list boxes. So, you know, we'll just skip that for now and um, get back to that later, I suppose. But, yes, now you know how to um, get the Twitter feed and uh, the thing that would be on your home page. So now what we want to do, uh, let's just say you want this to have a nice design and you want your profile picture when you entered to actually be displayed on the application itself. So we're going to create a nice picture box here. Make it nice and big. I don't know how big the profile picture is going to be. but Now we're going to display our own profile picture right here. So once we double click on enter, uh, after it's done doing all of this stuff, we can actually download our own profile picture and display it. So we don't want it in this for block, careful of that. So we're actually going to say my.computer.network.download file and then the address is going to be tw.accountinformation and then profile image URL and we're actually going to just put it in my.application.info.directory path. And we're going to name this profile pick.png. And now we can actually just say picture box one dot image equals image dot from file and then my dot application dot info dot directory path plus profile pick.png. So now that we've got that all settled, um, what we're pretty much doing is we're just downloading the picture and then setting it as the uh, picture box this image. This image dot from file is just telling Visual Basic to um, transform this file into an image variable. Pretty simple stuff. So now we're going to try this. We're going to open the code. Oops, I always forget to do that. 7200371 and then we're going to press enter. And as you can see here it does everything we want it to. It gets our username down here. It gets our uh, feed right here and then it actually puts our profile picture right here. 
So now we can uh, add more, now that we've got all the information we need, let's say, we can actually add more functions to for functionality to this program. Like say you want the functionality to send a direct message to the selected user in the list box. So let's say you double click a user and yeah, you double click a user and then you want to send a direct message to, no, because that involves making a new form, which is bad for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to create a uh, another text box here. And then a button. And then let's just put a label. So send direct message to. And then we also need uh, the place to type the actual message itself. Add a nice little label. DM for direct message. And then button 4 will be send. Okay. So now we've got it all set up. This is text box 3 and this is text box 4. So now once we double click on send, the first thing we need to do is actually authenticate the... Um, like, tell Twitter to log in with us by authenticating. And as you remember from part 1, we stored all of this information in variables. Oops. Okay, so now that we're authenticated, we can actually just um, send a direct message right here. And the user that we want to send it to, which is textbox3.text, and then the text, which is textbox4.text. And there we go. So now let's try this out by sending a direct message to... Um, oh, first we need to open this code. 8102436. Oh yes, okay, I could not move the profile picture because the profile picture already exists there. Okay, so let's tell it to automatically overwrite uh, this file. Just need to provide it with some information, and then, true, we're going to automatically overwrite. It's just another parameter there. So let's try this again. 4098539, enter. Okay, so now I'm going to send a direct message to um, my good fr friend... I don't even know. Let's get a random one from here, shall we? Let's go Reese Bullet. So we want to send a direct message to Reese Bullet, and the direct message is going to say, Hi, and then we're going to press send. And it didn't display a confirmation or anything because we didn't code it to, but if we actually look here, if we refresh the timeline here, okay, Maybe not. I don't know exactly how to look at uh, direct messages. Let's just go to Twitter and then... Uh, oh, messages. Here we go. Messages. And there we go. As you can see here, 26 seconds ago, we said hi to Reese Bullet. So, yes. That works very well. And um, this is just basic functionality that you could go over. You can definitely go more in depth... Uh, everything has its own subcategory, so we can definitely just say TW, and then we can get uh, all this account information that we need about us. We can send direct messages. We can get our friends. We can we can do everything we want to, even search for users. And uh, this tutorial only covers a brief section of it because if I was to do a full tutorial on how to do things in Twitter, that would take forever. So. Um, this is just a basic tutorial to get you started, and I really hope it helped. If you need any more information, you can always go to um, the Twitter VB official documentation, which is very helpful, actually. This is how I learned to do everything. It's got tons of code snippets for you, and um, it's actually got a really nice user base, too. If you go to discussions, you can learn how to do a bunch of things just by looking at what other people want to do. So there you go. That's how to use Twitter in your VB.net application. This will conclude the series. And uh, yes.
So thanks for watching. This tutorial is brought to you by ARI Systems, which are actually a software consulting company. Uh, you can visit them at http colon backslash backslash arisystems.org. Alright guys, thanks for watching and um, have a great day. Talk to you guys later.